Please list a complete kit with all components for a new person on HF to do parks on the year, optimized for the lowest cost of entry, need everything. Keep getting asked this question, W3GUY. I think it's a really good question. The, the lowest cost of entry is the part that always trips me up. So I'm going to I'm gonna have Adam take it over. Uh, how small of a nano pixie can he take in the field? And how cheap would that be? Uh, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you could technically do it with a pixie, but you're going you're gonna to have a really hard time. Um, you're going to have to learn CW for starters, and then you're going to have to deal with uh, the, probably one of the most terrible radios that, that exists and still is capable of functioning. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pass it over to somebody else to start the list. I have my own uh, opinion. Maybe it's G90? Yeah, you say shaving with that G90? Yeah, well, G90 you know, is... And that's yeah, the thing. Pretty, I was going to say the 5105 is probably cheaper than the G90, but... Not really. No. Uh, no. Okay. But the G90 is 20 watts, whereas the, the 5105, excuse me, is uh, 5 watts. And so I would almost say that the G90 would be the first uh, first thing that you would want to look for as the, the, your starting radio. Go with the G90. It's relatively cheap. What is like 550 bucks or something along those lines right now? It's going to get you 20 watts. It, it's going to have a built-in automatic antenna tuner or a built-in antenna tuner, excuse me. <laughs> It's going to uh, it's going to give you you know a nice little waterfall display and everything. So it's it's almost like a, a perfect entry level radio for what you're looking to do, and it's portable. Then you're going to need a battery, some sort of external power source. Um, and if you're looking for inexpensiveness, um, this is probably where some people might disagree, but I'd say the Miati. Miati makes a a relatively inexpensive battery. Um, and then you're going to need some coax and an antenna, which I'll give it over to you guys for that. Yeah, I, I would probably build a, a random wire antenna, 41-foot radiator, and a 17-foot counterpoise uh, with a, a toroid, um, probably an FT140-61. Make a 9-to-1 unun, stick it in a box, and uh, just attach that thing straight to the uh, straight to the radio. You don't even need coax. Um, get a 31-foot jack kite pole, um, something simple, durable, and relatively cheap, under 100 bucks. Hoist that thing up in the air, and, and you will have success. And I, and I gotta say, uh, I was saying that the G ninety might be like five fifty, but everybody's telling me, yeah, it's a, it's lowest four is twenty four twenty five, yeah. which is significantly <laughs> cheaper than the fifty one oh five. So you know, take that into consideration yeah. too. You yeah. might not even need that toroid to be honest. Like the tune is so good on yeah. those things yeah. that uh, you might just be able to bang it in with that. Then either one, literally, yeah. you just got yourself a battery, a G ninety, some way, some kind of master, a tree. 41 foot of radiating, radiating element and 17 foot of counterpoise and boom, you're cooking with gas. The G90 yeah. just, just placed higher than the FT991 on the Sherwood. So. I was going to ask nice. where it was on the Sherwood report. <laughs> hey, you don't, you don't even Wait, is that a joke? Because you have the, the, the stone face. No. no, I'm dead serious. I, I didn't believe it either. When Ape told me that, I was like, Ape's pulling my chain oh, again. Ape. And I, mm, okay. I went straight to Sherwood, and I'm like, it, it's what higher, man. You're, you're you're making me pull it up right now, aren't you? I swear to you. I'm, this is the one time in my life I'm not joking I with think, you guys. I think, he's, I think he's right. I think he's right. The, the only thing that you have to worry about with POTA is sometimes you go to parks, and they don't want you to put anything in the trees. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. getting a mast that's self-supporting or learning how to self-support the mast and then also the key is to get enough coax to get your antenna on top of the mast or your dipole that you bought or whatever sure. it is, get back down to your operating position. There's nothing worse than putting your mast up and then having your coax 10 feet too short. I just purchased some RG2, uh, what is it, RG213. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just purchased some of that for, for what I'm doing. And it, it works just fine, and it was relatively inexpensive. I think 50 feet was like 35 bucks. I'm like, That's not too bad uh, from cable experts. And you're talking about the point sorry, is getting ahead. on the air, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, just getting on the air. Now you're talking about like expandable poles and everything. I'm just going to give myself a cheap plug. I have a video coming up soon where I just bought the jack height pole, 10 meters, the MFJ 10 meter pole, the spider beam pole, and whatever other ones I can find, I'll buy and I'm going to compare them all. So hopefully that'll come cool. out soon. Yeah, it'll give you guys an idea of which one might be good and which one you might want to avoid because there is one you're probably going to want to avoid. What about the? Uh... DX Commander. Oh. <laughs> That's right. I, I, gotta give, I gotta give me one of those DX Commanders. You know? <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you got the two toot in there. Uh, <laughs> which one is yeah. that? Uh, which one's that, Mike? Yeah. Soda Beams. Okay, you know, this is the Soda Beams Carbon 6. Nice. Oh, better than the Carbon 5. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> it's one more. One, yeah. more. Yeah. one, more. one this, more. This, this yeah. one goes up to 11. <laughs> 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 no, this is a great cast. Yeah. That one's really good. Bucks. I used 
Yeah, I use that a lot as well. But there's also, um, there's an even, I mean, that's a great mask and I, I take that with me. But if you go on to AliExpress and have a wee hunt around or even eBay, you can find ones that are super similar. They're actually, they're, t- they're fishing poles, um, mm-hmm. but they're carbon. They're even lighter than that. And they're like half the price of even that. And I've been I, running the, one of those recently just for a laugh. I have a couple of those Chinese carbon ones. One of them mm-hmm. is really good. It's a Gocher Sparkle that you can't get anymore, unfortunately. And then I bought another Gocher um i plan on doing a video on these at some point because i get a million questions all the time on like what's what's a good mass to use portable and uh mm. everyone wants that go that i <laughs> i would buy another one if i could but nice. um yeah. that that other one that i bought is kind of crappy i mean it works but i already i already broke one of the top things fortunately yeah, they sent be... another one with it but yeah you got to be the other thing to keep in mind though is if you are going to buy a carbon mask like that that's a six meter carbon mast. That's rad, but it's not going to run your dipoles. If you check your dipole up and hang coax up, it's going to be it's going to be limp, and you're going to have a bad day, and you're going to be short one mast. So, sweet for the random wire, um, no DX, but not good, man. If you got to hoist up coax, it's going to kill a carbon mast. In fact, the small ones, these yeah. like six meter guys. Yeah. Eh? It's just a unless you have really thin that's coax. Where, that's where that extra. That that's where that extra. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that uh, extra cash goes for the gigaparts carbon fiber mass those things are bulletproof you could you could put your truck on top of that thing so it's i did much a fundamental, way. I did a much fundamental hack though I, I i've gotten lucky with a couple of ebay poles that cost like mm-hmm. i don't know seven bucks each it was like a seven year <laughs> nice. carbon job nice. um i i used a, a fishing rod eyelet the end piece just hot glue the end on it and then um take a couple of the sections and just glue them together the the the, the oh, tip sections nice. Uh, yeah, just just glue them together so they never come apart because you're you're never going to use that that tip anyway, particularly on the fishing rods. So that gives you a lot more rigidity. But I agree, you're you're not really going to run coax off that; it's too heavy. Oh, that's a really good idea, man. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it, it does it does stiffen it up considerably. Mm. 